everybody, Jeff Outdoors with Old Pops here, and that is the front end of the 196 Charger VMAG. Now I want you to look at that platform and that step and that handle right there. If you're like me, getting around in the front of these boats by yourself is very difficult anymore, and I'm going to tell you, that makes your life a lot easier. This product makes your life a lot easier, the boat buckle. Something so simple can really make your fishing trip that much more enjoyable. Have those on both sides of the boat, of course. And then I just got your standard transom saver. I haven't really found anything there that seems to uh, work one way or another a little bit better. But I'm at Spring River over at uh, Grand Lake in northeast Oklahoma, and I'm going to be looking for some crappie today. Now again, I'm telling you, being able to hop up on the platform, have a handrail right there where you can unhook your boat and then just push it off the trailer and get to where you know that once you put your boat in reverse, it's going to go, is such a pleasure. Hey, I met a great guy here and his daughter and uh, they use some of the flea fly fishing products that I use and uh, they were over from Missouri and uh, they said hey man we really enjoy those old pops videos and I walked over and shook his hand and talked to his daughter for a minute and that's one of the best things about being an outdoorsman and fishing is getting to meet people and showing folks how to be more successful in the outdoors so um, say hi to your friends out there and help them when you can Okay, up the river I go, and I don't have to go very far to some areas up there where typically the white bass and crappie hang out, and I'm going to be looking for fish either with go-go minnows or crappie kickers today, and if I get into a situation where I need to cast, I will be throwing a go-go minnow, but I'll have the crappie kicker and the smelly smack sitting there waiting to go as well in case I get into some vertical fish, so you never know up here what the activity level of fish will be, so you need to have two or three rods rigged up and ready to go. Now when I first got up there, I saw some fish and some submerged brush piles down in the bottom of the channel in about 16 to 18 feet and I hit them with the crappie kicker a little while and I saw that that pile was plumb full of small crappie. Nothing big enough to really gulp the two and a half inch bait I had on there so I switched over to the go go minnow and I really like to just throw the go go minnow when I'm up there if I can but I tell you what I had no luck casting. Uh, the last time I was up there I caught all my fish casting so again, you need to make sure that you have different setups for different days. And it just happened that the fish were not really feeding casting as well as they were dropping into the vertical structure, which I'm getting ready to do. Now I went down to a smaller size uh, crappie kicker. I used two 16 ounce crappie kickers and uh, I was using the big eye jig head, uh, six pound micro braid and if you have not tried the flea fly micro braid I'm just gonna tell you right now that it will turn a ten dollar fishing rod into a two hundred dollar fishing rod really quick you cannot believe how sensitive that line is and how good it casts the first one's in the boat and I'm reaching in to get my crappie gauge here in Oklahoma on Grand Lake 
you have to have fish that are 10 inches long and there is only a 15 fish crappie per day limit. So I'm on my way. Let's look at the live scope a little bit and see what's happening down there. Hey, you know, I thought I was going to get a double right there with both those crappie coming up there behind those kickers, but that did not work out. Now, I just kept on working out there, and the fishing just was not stellar by any stretch of the imagination today. But I stayed on those piles, and I probably did not move 150, 200 yards from the time I got up there to the time that I left. And a lot of times I went from spot to spot and just made a circle and would go back and pick off an active fish or two off each one. And then I would find another one, use my GPS, go over to the next waypoint and uh, pick another fish or two off. So I just kept on fishing and man I tell you what I got into some piles that were just full of this size crappie right here which is absolutely wonderful I mean I don't want to catch those all day long but golly we sure want to see those small fish in the lake too because that means we're going to have years to come of uh, really good crappie fishing here in Oklahoma. When you're using live scope, sometimes when you're raising that jig up, those crappie come up from underneath it. And when they do, and they come up and they hit it and they push it up like that, you better be ready to raise your rod way up. And again, that's one of the reasons why I love that micro braid because there is zero stretch in that. And that allows me to get a good solid hook set in their mouth when they inhale it with no stretch like you get when you're using monofilament. Well that does it for me. I'm limited out. Thanks for getting in the boat going fishing with me today. I hope some of these tips and some of this live scope information helps you catch more fish. I hope some of these gear tips about what I'm using help you become more successful. And I'm glad that you all are enjoying the voiceover uh, clips here at Old Pops. Um, this really helps me be able to put these videos together. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you, running that Charger V Mag is a lot of fun itself. Enjoy your way in next time you go in. Soak up all the surroundings and uh, enjoy your boat ride or your deer hunt or your walk back to your truck, whatever it might be. 
and I uh, hope you guys are successful the next time you're out in the woods or on the water. We'll catch you later.